Well, thank you, comrades. I want to say, <laughs> I'm next. I want to tell you it's nice to be here at the Academy Awards. I just returned from Moscow. They didn't recognize me there either. No, but this is the nicest group of filthy capitalists I've ever seen. It's nice to be back here. At least here, they allow the losers to stay in town. <laughs> but what a reception. What a reception I got in Moscow. People told me there hadn't been anything like it since Napoleon arrived. <laughs> and I must say, they gave us wonderful treatment. They put us in a very modern hotel. They have TV in every room. Only it watches you. <laughs> Cary Grant was in Russia just before us. He lives dangerously. He walked into a restaurant and ordered oysters Rockefeller. <laughs> but this is a great night for Hollywood, the Oscar Derby again. What suspense. Everyone's got their fingers crossed. It's like the countdown at Cape Canaveral. And it's catching. I'm as nervous as a Russian scientist dog. I haven't been able to appear at the last few Academy Awards because of conflicting sponsors, but tonight the conflict is gone. <laughs> and so are the sponsors. Just imagine. <laughs> just imagine. All this expensive talent assembled by the movie industry and given away free to television. In fact, they've even closed most of the movie theaters to make sure you stay home. <laughs> it just goes to prove that this industry isn't frightened. It's off its rocker. <laughs> Never before in history has so many stars been on one show. If someone should suddenly explode a bomb and blow up every big star in this theater, I still wouldn't get an award. <laughs> so put it in a bucket of water, Charlie, will you? No, all of America's been watching this show, and it's been pretty confusing. After almost an hour and a quarter, they still don't know what they're supposed to run down to the corner grocery and buy. <laughs> one guy... One guy in Utah has been watching Lana and Kim, and he just phoned us. He knows what he wants, but he doesn't know where to send the box tops. <laughs> but the popularity of this program tonight on television proves what I've always said. Actors may yet replace the horse. <laughs> I'd like to replace that joke. Now we have... <laughs> so the last time I did this show, I was the sole MC, and tonight there are four MCs ahead of me. I knew unemployment was widespread, but I didn't think it was this bad. <laughs> I was very interested in who was going to win the award for best actor tonight, so I checked with Price Waterhouse, but they're a very reputable firm, so they sent my check back. <laughs> now, I haven't won an award in 15 years, and I've been trying very hard. And I just want to say to my producers, directors, and cameramen that I could never have done it alone. You all helped. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm still in show business. I haven't received a memo from David Selznick today. <laughs> no, I've never really wanted an Oscar, although I guess they are reassuring to an actor who doesn't know how great he really is. <laughs> At least that's what Peter Potter told me. But remember, <laughs> it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. That's what I say, and I'll keep on saying it till my psychiatrist tells me I can stop. <laughs> Our industry can be proud of the list of nominees this year. It's been read into the record at the UN. I won't say there are many foreign names on the list, but this year the Academy switched from Pricewaterhouse to Berlitz. <laughs> Sesu Hayakawa, Miyoshi Yamiki, Vittoria De Siki, Anna Magnani. I think we're carrying this foreign aid too far. <laughs> no, they shot Sayonara in Japan in the bridge on the River Kwai in Malaya, and the only place they had any trouble with the natives was when they shot Peyton Place in Massachusetts. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, right now, I would like to introduce two of our great actors, two of our most popular motion picture stars here in Hollywood for the best writing of a motion picture. Here is Doris Day and Clark Gable, right here. <laughs>
present the writing awards tonight. Thank you. Bob, I know from experience that uh, writers are the hardest workers in Hollywood. Yeah, if they'd worked a little harder, Clark, I wouldn't have to go to Moscow to get laughs. <laughs> Yes, I think so. The nominees for Best Written Screenplay based on material from another medium are... Pierre Boulle, The Bridge on the River Kwai. John Lee Mann and John Houston, for heaven knows Mr. Allison. John Michael Hayes, Peyton Place. Paul Osborne, Sayonara. Reginald Rose, Twelve Angry Men. Uh, you open it, Doris. All right. Pierre Boulle, The Bridge on the River Kwai. Accepting the award for Mr. Boulle is Kim Novak. My boss, the late Mr. Harry Cohn, was very, very proud of this film, Bridge on the River Kwai, as all of us at Columbia are. And I am very honored and very happy to accept this award for Pierre Boulle. Thank you. And now for the best story in screenplay, written especially for the screen. The nominees are... George Wells for Designing Woman. Leonard Gersh for Funny Face. Man of a Thousand Faces, story by Ralph Wheelwright, and screenplay by R. Wright Campbell, Ivan Goff, and Ben Roberts. The Ten Star, story by Barney Slater and Joel King. Screenplay by Dudley Nichols. Vitelloni, story by Federico Fellini, Ennio Flagiano, and Tullio Pinelli. Screenplay by Federico Fellini and Ennio Flagiano. It's all yours, dear. <laughs> I hope you get Flagiano. Designing woman, George Wells. The suggestion for the screenplay Designing Woman came from one of our industry's most wonderful designing women, Helen Rose. 